And then it's transitioning into this next level state. And the next level state is this idea that my pain, my hurt, as well as my experience with other people and my education informs my unique meaning and purpose in the world. How can you live your best life? How can you be the person that you want to be able to be so you can live the life that you want to be able to live? And really, how can you not get caught up in the stuff that has you feeling down the dumps? Or really just the things slowing you down so that they're essentially stopping you from being who you want to be, experiencing what you want to experience, doing what you want to be able to do, living the life that you really want to be able to live. And if you have these questions going in your head, then stick with me. I have an amazing interview with Jay Teeter coming up for you. This is really profound. I literally have sat down multiple times and gone through this interview by myself to make sure I'm picking up what Jade is putting down. And Jade that you're about to meet in just a second is one incredible human, someone I I have learned from for many years and someone that I've been able to really admire and respect and very thankfully get to know as a friend as well. So I'm really looking forward to hearing what you are able to take from this episode because there is some real gold, some really practical, actually down in the trenches, things that you can do from this episode that is going to help empower you and get you to be able to really live the life that you want. And I know, and I know, that's a big promise, but that's what we're here to do. Okay, so why don't we start with the idea of um, the discussion about uh, passion versus meaning versus purpose, okay? Because I think what, what people typically do is they have a sense, I think from the time we're kids, it's the reason we pretend like we're cowboys or superheroes or these things. We have this sense that we can be great and we want to be great. It's kind of deep within us that we will do something that uniquely serves the world. And when we're sort of young and we're children, this manifests as pretending, pretending to be superheroes, war heroes. We're always pretending to be a hero, almost always. And within that, that sort of starts this whole thing that we have this inkling, I'm here to do something inherently valuable, to make the world a better place. It's my belief that each of us humans have that within us. Now, it can get lost along the way, and this is the important part. In a, in a sense, I believe it is meant to get lost, in a sense, because here's the thing. I, I have this saying, uh, people want things to be easy, but easy is earned. It's something you earn through suffering, through pain, through failure, through fear. And each of these things uh, informs us about what our unique place in the world will be. But instead of chasing our unique path and embracing our unique pain and our unique suffering, because each of us have it, right? Like there's not a human on the planet who hasn't suffered deeply, and especially in childhood, because we don't really understand the randomness of life and the cruelty of life and how certain humans who do things that hurt us are hurting themselves. We don't have this sort of understanding yet. We're not mature enough. And so what we do is we push that stuff aside in order to fit in to cultural norms. And this is probably beneficial because any human does not want to go through life essentially just immersed in their pain and acting as if they're the center of the universe. I call this a base level person. It's, it's a person who essentially goes, the world revolves around me and my pain. So it's probably a good thing we step out of that for a minute to look at, hey, other people have pain too. Other people have ways that they've set up that may instruct me to be virtuous or moral or to develop certain skills that I may not have developed on my own. I call that the culture level. It's the adolescent, right? It's the person who's looking out into the world and essentially going, um, I see your dysfunction and I see your dysfunction and I see your strength and I see your strength and you're cool, but you're not. And I can see all that, but I don't yet see my dysfunctions, my strengths, uh, where I'm cool or where I'm not. And I'm going to hide that from you to be more like the outside world. That's the culture level. So we have to go from base level, our hurts and our pains and our suffering, to this culture level, watching and seeing how other people are managing things, how we might want to be. It's the same reason why we pick heroes in the first place so we can emulate them. And then it's transitioning into this next level state. And the next level state is this idea that my pain, my hurt, 
as well as my experience with other people and my education informs my unique meaning and purpose in the world. So to me, what ends up happening is passions are a very, in a sense, a very base level thing. If you're not careful, you could chase passions all over the place and they lead you nowhere. Culture level stuff is very meaning based because it's sort of like I can find meaning in my kids and I can find meaning in my friends and I can find meaning in my lover. But if my kids are gone and my friends are gone and my lover is gone, what do I have left? Purpose is taking that sort of passion and meaning and turning it into something that serves the world, that makes the world a better place, that makes a difference and helps us seem like we matter. And I think that's the first step that every human must make. They must transcend base level selfishness. They have to transcend culture level. Let me try to be like them to get to their next level state, which is like all this stuff that has happened to me, all my education, all my pain, all my wounds, all my hurt inform me in a very unique and specific way that only I can deliver to the world. And then that becomes the thing that we have to push forward. Now, sadly, many people go through their entire lives without ever escaping the culture level construct. In a sense, the midlife crisis to me is really an ode to that. It's essentially saying that your last final chance to escape adolescence, in a sense, to become the thing that you are really meant to be. Now, here's the final thing I'll say about that before I get into the path that I believe we need to follow to do this. The final thing I'll sort of say about the next level human framework is that in that process, we can get um, we can get lost as humans. Right. And so we need to be very specific about um, the plan of action. And that brings me into sort of this idea of how do we do this? How do heroes do this? Like, I don't know who your heroes are. The people listening to this, they have heroes. Mine are people like Nelson Mandela, Bruce Lee, uh, Muhammad Ali. Um, they tend to be these teachers slash warriors. And so that begins to inform me about how do I um, become a teacher slash warrior? That gives me a hint into who I want to be. And the final stage here is that most people go, Okay, I see that I get this whole thing and I want to be great and I want to make money and I want to have a big house and I want to um, do all these amazing things. And that's how I become successful. But what they miss is that still a culture level way of being. What we need to understand is that some of the most powerful people I know. Yes, Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King, all these people we read about, but also my father who decided that he was going to be the best dad and did not care about going up the hierarchy. And he made that decision very early on. He decided, I am going to be the best father. So rather than staying late at work to try to become a manager, I'm going to show up at my kids ball games every single time. I'm going to he <laughs> he basically took an hour and a half each work day for lunch to be with his mom, his lover, because that was important to him. And he went to work at 6 a.m. so he could be home at 4 p.m. to be at all of our football practices and things like that. And to me, he'll never be celebrated from that. No one's ever going to go and say, good job, you're an amazing person. Yet, by owning his purpose fully and not making it a culture level thing about I'm going to be a manager with a nice car and lots of money, what he ended up doing was creating a legacy for himself, not from an ego standpoint, but he basically created these ripples that have impacted his kids, that then have impacted the people they touch, that have actually impacted everyone who's ever watched him be an amazing father. I'll give you an example of this before I move on to sort of the six powers. But I was one day sitting there at Whole Foods in Santa Monica, California during the busiest time. And it's one of these times where a cashier or two must not have shown up. So it's literally like the, the place is full, aisles all the way down. And we're sitting there and I am third in line. There's an old woman who's checking out. There's a guy, young guy behind her. And then there's me. And then there's a line of 20 people. And this woman must have had um, 
dementia or something. She was confused every time this young cashier who must have been um, a young guy in his early 20s scanned an item. He would she would say, oh, is that mine? I, I don't think I got that. Um, no, 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 I don't want that. And this was going on and on. So you can imagine this is five minutes. Now, five minutes at a grocery line is an agonizing period of time. So I'm sitting there watching and at first I'm annoyed as shit, right? I'm, I'm getting agitated and the guy in front of me is, he is agitated and everyone's getting agitated. This cashier is sitting there bantering with her, being playful, being so sweet, making jokes, turns it into a game almost. So much so that all of a sudden, instead of being agitated, I'm looking at this young kid and being like, this is amazing. Next thing I know, all these angry people in line, including myself, are laughing, rooting for her, having an amazing time. I got up to the line. She finally got through. I got up to the line and he goes, I'm really sorry about the, the wait. And I was like, dude, that is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. I want to be exactly like you. I mean, I, I want to be that guy who can take. And he goes, you know what, man? I just was thinking that might be my you know, my grandmother or whatever. And his purpose in that meeting wasn't about getting accolades, getting recognition or doing anything. But he I am still talking about him. I don't know his name. I don't know who he was. I just know I am going to tell that story to you. I'm going to tell that story to my kids. I'm going to tell that story to everyone I can tell because it's such a powerful impact about how we as humans can show up successfully in the world. And I'll say this, if you're an entrepreneur and you're someone who's driving and pushing for money, if you can't bring your purpose to everyday situations like that and make a difference for a normal human sitting in front of you, then I ask you, what are you doing on the planet in a sense? And how are you gonna get through the rough times? Because this isn't about just getting fancy trinkets. So that's, the, that's what I think purpose is. It encompasses, yes, what you're doing to succeed. OK, but it also encompasses what you are doing and how you are behaving and how you are um, bringing light to the world in your everyday interactions. Purpose is that powerful. That's why I think passions. Yeah, they're fun. They can lead you somewhere. Meaning, yes, but it's fleeting. It's dependent on other people. Purpose is something you bring to your interactions that you just decide. Now, I have to jump in here. I have to be able to say, are we making sure that you and I are actually picking up what JD is putting down right now? This is so profound. This is so important. I want to be able to go through this just one more time. Purpose is something you bring to your interactions that you just decide. My dad decided he's going to be the best father. And we can have multiple purposes, by the way. When I discovered my purpose, I was like, my purpose is teacher. Yes, I'm a physician. Yes, I've been a personal trainer. Yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Yes, I have all these things. But what I saw, my unique skill set and my unique experiences and my unique pain all pushed me as I get to my next level self to the teacher point. And now I know to teach. I know to teach whether I'm doing it in a big form, whether I'm on an interview like this or whether I'm just sitting down with someone. And by the way, if you really grab hold of the teacher sort of moniker, you also understand teachers are students first. And so that becomes my pur purpose and my life's drive. So I think that's the first thing that everyone needs to understand. How do I trend, trans transfer from a base level to culture level to next level? How do I go from you know sort of passions to meaning to deep purpose? And how do I bring that to my job and my interactions with people? That's the first thing. Once you get there, then you're not confused anymore. Then you're not thrown off as much because you know when it gets really tough, that becomes the anchor and the lighthouse in the most difficult times through grief, through loss, through hurt, through pain. That's your anchor and your lighthouse that you can always go back to. So to me, that's the first thing that everyone sort of needs to do. Now, I feel pretty confident in saying that you and I both have barriers, have things come up in life that stop us from getting to where it is that we want to be able to grow. But what's really important is what are the tools that we have? What are the skill sets that we have? What is it that we can do so that we can move past those barriers and be able to get to where we want to be able to get to or experience what we want to be able to experience or feel what it is that we want to be able to feel. So we're getting 
out of fear because one of the biggest issues with fear is we can be stuck. We can be stuck in that fear mindset, which stops us from thinking clearly and stops us from doing what it is that we need to be able to do to be able to move through it, which is why I think the skills and tools that Jade shares here is so needed. The next thing is a very um, practical, I think, way of looking at life. To me, when I look at successful people, they have each uh, gone through six different masteries, six different skills they have. And um, I teach this uh, as an acronym, actually, because I think it's just easier to remember. These, I call them the six powers, and they are essentially go by the acronym powers. And they are perception, ownership, wisdom, engagement, resolve, and sharing. And I won't belabor this and go on and on forever with this, but I just want to show you how these work. Perception is the way that you see the world. And we just covered an awful lot of perception, this idea of to, in order for you to see your place in the world accurately. You know, here's the thing, life happens and we get to happen back. And so we have to be able to say, every time life happens, I bring my purpose to that interaction and I will turn it to good, uh, to learning, to growth. Perception is this idea that I'm not a victim. I don't blame, I don't complain. Uh, I see the truth of things. Um, and I um, am working to escape the culture level mindsets. If you ever seen the movie, The Matrix, this is what perception really is. It's seeing the world and yourself in it accurately. And that means um, in my space, in the entrepreneurial space, that means feedback becomes one of your most valuable assets, the hate and the love become something other than just hate and love. It used to be someone to hate on me, I'd hate on them. It used to be someone to give me a compliment and love on me, I'd love on them. Now I go, how can I use this things to grow and make my reality more accurate so I can better serve and better teach? Every opportunity is a, a way for me to refine my purpose. That's to me perception. Now ownership, the next stage of this is this idea that everything that happens to you that is in your sphere of awareness is your responsibility. So another way to think about this, there's a book called Extreme Ownership. That's essentially what I'm talking about. It's your job and your job alone. It is no one else's job to solve your pain, to you know um, deal with your suffering. Here's the way I look at this. Imagine, right? Imagine I'm in the kitchen and I'm cutting uh, some onions or something and I slice my thumb, right? Cut it wide open. Now, here's what a lot of people do. Some people do this. Ow, 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 showing everyone their thumb, right? As if someone else is supposed to patch it for them. Now we can see psychologically, we see people who do this. Something happens in their lives and they walk around going, ow, 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 ow. Other people, right? Other people go, just stick their thumb behind their back and act like nothing happened and just start bleeding, right? We, we know people like this who just stuff it and try to move on. We also know people who just stare at it, just stare at it and cry, just stare at it. Now we know that if you cut your thumb, what are you gonna do? First thing you're gonna do is cover your thumb. You're gonna look at it, make sure how deep is it? Do I need to take care of it? What do I need to do? You're gonna patch it up. And then probably what you're gonna do after that is learn to hone your knife skills better so you don't cut your thumb again. This is ownership on the, so take that concept physically turn it into a psychological aspect. And that's what we need to be doing. Shit that happens to you, whether you're responsible for it or not. I would even say if someone came along with a hammer while you're sound asleep and slammed your, your, uh, you, you had nothing to do with it. Your thumbs hanging out of the bed and someone slams it with a hammer. You still have to take responsibility for that. Whether it is to stop them from doing that, whether it is to find a different place to sleep where someone can't bang your, you know, a finger with a thumb, this is ownership. And if you can't master that aspect of life, you will constantly uh, be miserable and be a victim and not have any success. So to me, perception, ownership. Now wisdom is pretty easy, right? Because here's the, here's the interesting thing. I might see myself as a teacher. Um, I might see that I have some skill sets. I might even recognize that I have an interesting story that I can teach. Yet, I might not be able to write. I might not be able to speak well. I might not um, be able to um, do some of the skills that I need to tell that story, to master that domain. And therefore, I have to go and learn. 
I can't just say I'm an expert because I'm an expert. I can't just go, well, I think I'm going to do this and now I'm an expert. Now, if I say it and then start reading about it, studying about it, traveling about it, eat, breathe, sleep it, become, then I become the thing. And that means escaping bias and escaping dogma and looking beyond your own belief systems to potential other areas that can benefit you and grow you. So wisdom is absolutely critical. And most people miss that. They simply go, I'm good looking. I have a cool story to tell. I've got a unique skill set. I'm an expert now. And I would say what you are is you are a beginning of this process. And in order to really master it, wisdom tells you you need to learn and experience. And by the way, wisdom, right? Information plus knowledge plus experience. That is an information learned is knowledge. So knowledge plus experience is wisdom. We need both book smarts and in the trenches. So, you know, I came up as a personal trainer. Imagine me if I just decided, hey, I had some success in a gym when I was younger. I'll just start, you know, teaching this stuff and then stopped the learning, stopped reading, didn't pay any more attention to any anything else. That's not very wise. So I have to continue to hold, hone my craft. The next two um, are some of my favorites, engagement and resolve, because here's the thing. As you embark on this success and what you want to do with your life, um, you will necessarily run into obstacles, run into walls. You have to make uh, definitive choices and take uh, clear action. So engagement is literally about choices and actions. I don't expect you to make those choices for me. I don't wait and say, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? It's the difference between a decision and a choice is critical when it comes to engagement. A decision, if you look at the definitions, a decision has um, considerations are in the definition. So a decision is, let's say me and you go sit down and have dinner, right? And there's three other friends. A decision is, hey, what are you having? What are you having? Oh, you're having that? Oh, maybe I'll get that. A decision is, oh, we're going for Mexican? Well, I always get I always get this at Mexican. It's considerations. A choice is chicken salad. I get chicken with salad on it or salad with chicken on it no matter what. Doesn't matter if I'm at a burger joint. I just take off the bread. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. If I'm at a Mexican place, I get a fajita without the beans, the rice and the tortillas. And there I got my chicken salad. That's the difference. A choice is a place of knowing. That's my choice regardless. No considerations. I don't care what you think. I don't care where I am. So to me, we need to make more choices. Engagement is about choices and action. Resolve is the second to the last principle. And resolve is really about fears, overcoming fears and failures. And I have a concept in this that I call the fear PR. So in the personal training world and in the health and fitness world, we have a concept we call PR or personal record. So if I'm if I can squat 500 pounds, but I've never done 510, and I want to attempt 510, that's a PR attempt. If I get it, I got a PR and that's a personal record. Well, most of us have fears. For example, I'll share a silly one of mine with you. I'm afraid of the ocean and specifically sharks, right? Fear PR is the idea that I need to attack these fears and I need to attack these failures and I chunk them in very small ways to build up confidence and competence in this area. And so, for example, here's another small example. Let's say you're afraid of being alone and it's debilitating. Well, a fear PR level one would be like you're going to go to the movies alone by yourself. It's kind of stressful when you buy the ticket and you go sit down. But once the movie starts, you're distracted and it's fairly easy. Maybe PR, PR level two, fear PR level two would be go out to dinner by yourself. Maybe fear PR level three is go out to dinner by yourself without your phone. Maybe fear PR level 10 would be I'm going to Paris where I do not speak French and I'm going to live there for three weeks by myself. For me and my fear of sharks and, and the ocean, what I have done is slowly fear PR number one was go get in the ocean, just the surf. Fear PR number two was go out on a boat in the ocean. Fear PR level three was for me snorkeling. Now, maybe my final fear PR, and I've done those three, that's where I'm up to, maybe my final fear PR is in a cage or outside of a cage with sharks swimming around me scuba diving. Now, can you imagine how that would change my life in all areas, not just around the ocean, if I attacked my fears and failures that way? And that's the same way that we have to cultivate 
our lives. Resolve is critical. We have to learn to finish. If I'm writing a book, which I've now done several, I have to finish that project. So my brain goes, damn, Jade's not full of shit. He's actually means business. He finishes what he says. And then the next time, the next book, I have even an easier time finishing. Easy is earned again. And by the way, engagement resolve feeds back on perception and changes that whole loop. And then the final thing to bring this all full circle for me is the idea of the last one, the S is sharing. And this goes back to purpose. If we're doing all this stuff to build success and we're not doing it for something larger than ourselves, then it cannot sustain us for long. If we're doing it just to be seen, it won't sustain us for long. But if we're doing it out of a deep sense of this will make a difference for the people I love and more importantly, for even people who I'll never meet in my life, then then when I die on my deathbed, I can say I made a difference and I mattered here and I can die as the warriors say a good death, so to speak. To me, I have this thing. If you're not here to help, then why the hell are you here? And if it's all about yourself, you can never actually square this sense of fulfillment and making a difference. And so to me, that is the uh, sort of the masteries, those six points, perception, ownership, wisdom, engagement, resolve, and sharing. We as humans have to master each of those components to get and live our sort of next level life. And that's how I would see and sort of coach someone to, you know, um, make this journey. And it's not easy. Each of those things, we can sit here and talk about it, you know, but it is, it's life and life is dirty and rough and hard at times. And that's why I say that easy is something that you have to earn. You can't expect for it just to fall in your lap. Dude, you are amazing. As you can hear in the background, I'm loving everything that Jade is sharing here, and I hope you are too. Now, stick with me, because for you, for me, for any of us to be able to get to where we want to be able to go to, we need to be able to make choices. I I think you can agree with me in that. But when it comes to making the right choices and actually being able to have the thought process to get to where it is that we need to go to, to make those right choices, that can be a sticky situation. We can get caught up in the things that are essentially holding us back from making those right choices. So if you want to be able to make right choices, then stick with me. Yeah. To me, this is a critical, critical point. Here's what people think in business. They say, okay, it's ready aim, fire, right? To me, that's the wrong approach because then it's like, well, let me see if this person can help me. I'll learn this. You spend all your time in wisdom. That's why I say it's perception, ownership, wisdom. And then at that point, you have to jump. And what happens is there's this saying, and I do believe in distinctions and sayings. There's a saying, leap in the net will appear. I think that's all wrong. I think it's leap and weave the net as you fall. And that is the idea that you do not ready, aim, fire. You fire, aim, 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 aim. And all of that aiming is choice after choice after choice after choice. See, what we think is we go all this time making a decision, considerations. A decision is the ready, aim part. And we're like, should I do this? They said this. They said that. I read over here this. My dad did this. What will this person think? That's a decision. A choice is, you know what? I'm going to take action in this direction because it's what I feel. And by the way, what I feel in my mind, I don't believe in this whole intuitive sense. To me, that's earned. To me, what I know is to what I mean by that is intuition isn't magic. Intuition is earned through experience. And the way you gather that experience is just leap and trust the fact that I will figure it out. Because that first leap inevitably in business and success in anything is wrong. It's the wrong move. It always will be whether you plan for it or not. And so what we need to understand is the the choice I make is wrong. It's not uh, meant to be right. It's just supposed to get me on the path so I can pivot and pivot and pivot and pivot and slowly get there and trust that that process is the best process. I really hope that you enjoyed this episode with Jade as much as I did because I love sitting down with this guy every single time that I can and I wish I record every single situation that I'm in with this guy because 
He's brilliant. And I would love to hear from you. So if you're with me right now on YouTube, please in the comment below, let me know what did you love about this episode? What is it that you're actually going to use more importantly as well? Because I want to make this practical. I want to make this useful. If you're joining me on the Chris Dufay podcast, then please leave a review and let me know what are you loving from this episode and the show. And also, if you have not subscribed, please do so because it would be a huge bummer for you to miss out on the amazing interviews, the amazing episodes that are coming up as well. And as always, thank you so much for joining me and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episode.